Hey guys, so thank you so much for being here. I hope everybody is doing well. So hopefully I'll get this out on Sunday. If not, this will just be uh, what you need to know on any day. <laughs> um, so this is the spirit oracles that we're gonna use here to pick a pile. So I'm going to spread these out. We are gonna do three piles today, so. Okay, here we go. So pile one, pile two, and pile three. Okay, let's see what we got. So pile one, y'all have, I love this card, freedom, number four, moving on and letting go. That's pile one. Pile two, y'all have, Number 25, Goddess of Dreams, Vision, Intuition, and Receptivity. And then pile three, y'all have number 29, Connections, Partnership, Contract, and Commitment. Okay? Okay, guys. So there'll be a little bit of a meditation after this intro. If you want to sit and take a deep breath, Focus on which pile you feel most drawn to when you open your eyes. Or any way that you feel called to pick a pile. Um, there may be some images here. There may be some kind of synchronicity that's going on you've been seeing. Um, maybe a number. Could be anything. Maybe a situation you're in. Um, however you feel you're connecting to which card. There could be more than one message here for you. Um, or... You could listen to all the messages and see if there's um, something that you're picking up on or something that makes sense. If there's anything that could change your perspective for your highest good. Um, so timestamps for everything will be down below and I will see you later. Hey, pile one. So if you chose number four, freedom. Moving on and letting go. Now I'm gonna hold this up a little bit so y'all can see there's a lot of different things going on in this card. Um, one of these is you have a, a white dove there, you know, which is representing that, that idea of peace, finding peace. Also hope, you know, having faith in the situation that you will find peace in a situation here that you may be walking away from, moving on from or letting go of. You have a, a transformational butterfly here. This is that blue and black butterfly. There is a particular meaning for a blue and black butterfly. Um, if I cannot remember that exactly, but I can tell you that I, it does say something here about freedom um, and transforming yourself into a place to where you feel more free. So. With this being a cage and the door being open, the bird flying away, there may be something to do with something that you've been attached to here with that vine for a while now that has been kind of growing on you, kind of significant for you. Something's changed or transformed in, the, in your thought process or the way that you're seeing the situation. You may have been feeling like you were trapped or feeling like there was no way of, you know, getting away from what was what was going on or just that feeling of you know when you feel like there's nothing I can do about the situation it just is what it is or I feel like I'm stuck here in some kind of way that has changed because I feel like you have changed so your transformation within the how you're perceiving your situation or your circumstance or the position that you're in has changed and it's allowed you to free yourself here. Um, but I think going into this next phase, you're walking away from some sort of foundation. You see that? And I think going into this next phase in your thought process, there is a little bit of where you feel like you're kind of in the air. Something's like just kind of in the air. Um, and you're going to go through this process of having faith in the situation moving forward that you can move on from this, you can come, you can let go of this, you know? Um, and that your, your future 
your future will be brought. It's like you have to convince yourself that this is the right thing for you. Um, and once you do that, you do find, well, I feel like for some of you, you're going to be on a search for peace. Okay. That's what this next phase may be here. I'm going to get a couple of these to get started. These are the Moon Goddess Oracles. Right? <laughs> I do this all the time. And um, there's a lot of oracles I have to keep up with the names of. I think it's the Moon Goddess Oracles. Okay. <clears throat> So as far as what you need to know, this is what you need to know, what you need to know about this, okay? So whatever this idea of freedom is for you guys, whether you're in a position where you're trying to break yourself free or you've done that, what does Paul 1 need to know about this? What does Paul 1 need to know about this? <clears throat> so y'all have release. Wow. That is absolutely awesome, isn't it? Look at that. Look at the butterflies coming out of her chest there. Um, this is the Waning Crescent, and it's the number four on there, which you have the four here. Um, it's also the number 27, which may be relevant for someone, but... See how she's clinging on to these branches here? And not wanting to... She's almost like not wanting to let go, but then inside of her, you know, her intuition is calling her, her soul's calling her towards a new beginning, towards this new direction. All these butterflies with inside, you know, that's like telling you, yes, this is, you're, you know, you're not the same. You've changed, you're transformed in some way. You're not seeing something the same. And they're calling you towards this new beginning. But there's this resistance that's here when it comes to this release. So whether that's you or someone else, you know, there's some sort of resistance here. I believe it's a resistance that you may have to be may be fighting some sort of resistance or someone is can you give me any more insight about this I honestly do not remember the name of these oracles I'm sorry guys they will be listed below if you don't if you can't find it in the description box just send me a comment and I'll I'll write it down for you I think it's the Knowing of your heart, or you, you, I'm not, I'm not going to even try. <laughs> I'm not going to even try. Um, okay, so, let's just get this one. I want to see what's hidden here, what you, what's the challenge here? What, what is it that they need to see the most about this situation? What is this reading for? Whoa, no, 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 no. <laughs> Too many, too many, too many. I am going to keep these, I guess. Um, this is the number 13. It says, you create your pain. Wow. So I feel like that's super important here. Because we're talking about this resistance here. So with the 13, which is about, you know, um, a death and a transformation taking place. Um, a rebirth taking place. And with you create your pain, it's really kind of showing me that as far as, like, you're vulnerable in this situation. So you're vulnerable to all the emotions, all the feelings that you're feeling. There could be feelings of guilt, uh, frustration, um, shame even, you know, all those, those feelings that bring out those insecurities within yourself. The more you tell yourself about feeling guilty or feeling shameful or feeling anything here for doing what you need to do for yourself or for being in a situation where you have to do something here for yourself or you feel called to, can put you in a place to where if you sit with those emotions too much so, they can make you feel pain, you know, and it's almost like uh, we cause our own pain by constantly putting that guilt on us, you know, it's something like that, constantly feeling guilty for doing what you need to do, you know, um, something like that is here. 
but you're because you're very vulnerable to these feelings right you're very it's this is a feeling of like caring you know you really having a loving caring heart and you have to stay hey, take up for yourself or do something for yourself and you feel called to do that but you there's a feeling of not wanting to not because you don't want to do it for yourself but because you don't want to be that person that kind of starts everything up for everyone else or causes pain in any for anyone else so you create your own pain out of that by allowing yourself to feel so so guilty or um shameful in some kind of way and this is what they're wanting to talk about okay so and you also have choose to see no flaws number 25 What an interesting card. This is really pretty. She's in the water, but it looks like clouds down here, you know? So it's almost like drowning in your thoughts is something that comes to mind. She does have her head like peeking up over the water. My candle is making some weird noises, huh? <laughs> you also have um, four here as well. So four is cancer energy. It's, it's the fourth house and it represents home. There's this feeling of really overall doing what's best for yourself. And it's interesting, too, because you have that dove here, and she's all white like an angel, but she, it reminds me of this dove trying to get away, but you're just kind of drowning in your sorrows, or you're drowning in this feeling of pain. Choose to see no flaws. You may have been someone here that has denied yourself freedom, from a situation or let or moving on or letting go of something because you've denied the flaws in the situation but those are things that are kind of making you feel drowned you know like the thoughts of these things are kind of making you feel burdened and you feel so vulnerable in this situation to all those feelings of feeling guilty for for doing what you need to do for releasing so there's a part of you that's holding on even though you know you're being called elsewhere. And you you may have been repetitively denying yourself this, choosing to see no flaws in this situation, holding on so tightly, trying to keep from releasing this. And it's, you know, you've been kind of creating your own pain. This is like this is like death in reverse feeling. You know, being stuck in your own pain. Holding on. Um, I actually want to get this deck. This is the weight, one of the Waste Bell Tarot's. Uh, I think it's the Fortune, the Will of Fortune Tarot. I'm horrible with. I don't know what anything's called. What is wrong with me? I have to go brush up for Paul too, guys. I'm sorry. Too much going on. You know, my brain's full. <laughs> that might be part of this, what's here. Like, you may find yourself starting to kind of not be able to live your everyday in a way that you want to because you have all this stuff going on in your mind, you know? Like, you're just barely keeping your head above water here when it comes to not being able, to, or not looking at someone's flaws or not looking at the flaws in a situation, you know? Okay, King of Cups in reverse, which can be this drowning energy. So this is Scorpio energy. You can be dealing with Scorpio, Cancer, or Pisces, um, perhaps. But you have a, there's that Four of Pentacles in, re, in reverse, which is, is that letting go energy. Something that you've been holding on tightly to, or we'll talk about that. See, but you never get to the Five Pentacles, which is, leaving something out in the cold or feeling left out in the cold, right? So you hold on tightly to the four pentacles that you have because you're afraid of what will happen if you let go of that. You know, that could be something that's here. You have the moon, Pisces, Cancer, Energy. You have the Ace of Cups in reverse. Some of you may be um, turning down or walking away from a relationship. And you have a Five of Swords. So being confused or conflicted about walking around, walking away from a relationship, there's being a lot of illusions here creating that pain about the circumstances and what's what's ahead and what you don't know, what you can't see. And um, 
really letting go of this or moving on. And you're kind of drowning in your emotions in a way where you're, you're trying to figure out how to balance your emotions out. Um, how do I, how do I get, how do I release this? Should I release this? Am I creating my own pain in this situation by holding on to something? Am I choosing just not to see the things that aren't good for me here? You know, this is the conflict. And there's a heavy emphasis here on drowning in your sorrows, guys. So it's like, I mean that in the bestest of ways. It's like, um, it's that pain thing attached to shame and guilt, which we'll get more into. Um... It's almost like you're, look at that bird again, out of the cup. It's almost like you are, it's almost like you're more feeling sorry for the circumstances or where the situation is or the other person than you really are for yourself. It's like you're trying to, I mean, you are, you're trying to put someone else's needs above your own. And this may be something that you have a really hard time with. Like you have a really hard time putting yourself first. And you're you're trying to put yourself first in the situation, but you also like you you have someone possibly or our circumstance that you care about and you don't want to just leave, you know, that them in that place or, or that circumstance. This could even be like a you know, you don't want to move away from family or you don't want to leave that job because you have people around you that, that count on you or look up to you or need you in some kind of way. You know, it's just, it could be small like that. It could be a relationship. Um, why is the King of Cups in the reverse? Four of Cups. Again, this is like you are drowning in this idea of knowing, you know, and this could be someone here that you're also dealing with. Um, where it, they're kind of placing that emotional... Some of you may feel like this person's not good for you or the situation just isn't good for you. They could be putting some kind of emotional insecurity on you in some way, um, maybe intentionally, or you're just, you're not sure about that. Um, you may be afraid of this person's manipulation or how they can manipulate you in some kind of way. That's not everybody's story, but that's something that's coming up. That Four of Cups is that self-awareness that you're coming into, obviously. And I'm not surprised that we already have two four all, fours on the table. That five that's there. It's almost like... Um, this is the self-awareness. So are you are becoming aware of someone's intentions or understanding i think more in yourself that you're not emotionally imbalanced here you don't feel let's just say you just don't feel good about the circumstances you are becoming so far into awareness of that like those butterflies pulling you in your chest there's no getting away from it you know um why is the Four of Pentacles in reverse? The Four of Pentacles can can be like a resistance as well. Like you're holding on too tightly to something. As I say that, I see all these leaves fly out of the tree. <laughs> um, which are going straight into my hot tub. Isn't that great? <laughs> Crap. Um, Four of Pentacles in the reverse. And you have the Magician here in, in the reverse. So there's a part of you that keeps you keeps you stuck as in, let's just say in your mind, you think, you know, do I have everything that I really need as far as understanding that this is not the situation for me? Do I, do I really, do I really have all the information to make this decision? That's fear coming into the equation. You're allowing it right here with that magician in reverse because you feel like you don't have any control. When you feel like you don't have any control in a situation, you can start to head into fear. Like, I'm afraid of this because I feel like I have no control here. 
But I feel like for some of you, this is exactly what you're trying to release is this idea of, I don't have control over this. I don't have control in how these people feel about me. I don't have control in how this person is reacting. I don't have control in protecting the situation. And like I said, if you're someone that puts someone else's needs above your own, you're in that sense of control, like wanting to control the other person's emotions, needs, desires. Like, can I help them in that way? Can I help the situation? I need to look after that person's needs. You're trying to realize that you cannot do that in this situation here, which makes you feel, feel afraid. Have you ever like had your mind made up about something and then someone comes in and then you're like, well, maybe they're right. Or they just say, say certain things and, you're, and you think, they try to talk you out of it. You know, it's a feeling of trying to talk you out of it. And then they make you second guess your decision or they make you second guess yourself. Um, that's what I'm seeing here. But it's, this is, a lot of this is internal. The moon judgment yep you are afraid of making this judgment call like making this final also i think there's a part of you that's also a little bit afraid of of the new beginning i think this is what holds you back somewhat from releasing this altogether is being afraid of what's to come in the future like it's like a feeling of okay if i make this judgment call then that means that i will be sitting in a place to where i'm gonna have some sort of new beginning here so if I have this new beginning here, if everything changes and becomes different, what does that look like? What's going to happen? It's like, also, you may be questioning yourself, am I making a decision based off of some kind of fear? And once you start going into that place, oof, that's a dangerous place to be, you know, because... You can kind of somewhat lose yourself there. Because fear is tricky. <laughs> it's a trickster. Um, it makes you believe things that aren't true. So you can really kind of get stuck here. And then you can start to drown in your sorrows or drown in your emotions here. Where you start to get confused and conflicted about, you know, am I just choosing to see the things that I want to see here. And then you kind of go back into that cycle again. Why is that Ace of Cups here? Um, we have that Scorpio energy here. We have Pisces Cancer energy here. We have more Scorpio down here. And then you also have some Gemini and Virgo. Ace of Pentacles. Ace of Pentacles, Ace of Cups in reverse. This is definitely a lost opportunity or but that's just the thing though or is it a lost opportunity because this is where you're looking at something and going okay i'm walking away from this am i losing the opportunity walking away from this you know but the, there's a feeling of things not being balanced here things not being even if there's love here for, for whatever it is, there's love here, It's you don't feel balanced here with this Ace of Pentacles in reverse. There's a lack of strength. There's a lack of stability here, which is what we talked about. The number four is about, you know, stability. Like the four ones, a stable founda foundation. There's a lack of that that's here. It's like, okay, so there's love here, but it's, it's not stable in the way that I need or that I want. And again, you're trying to put your needs before someone else. Come With, with that comes this Five of Swords. Oh. It's a Five of Cups in reverse. This, this sums up this whole thing. This Five of Cups in reverse is this moving on, letting go. This is when... Yeah, you have been drowning in your sorrows. You've been thinking about this a lot. You've been thinking about what you've lost here. Even though you have this new adventure, or this new um, opportunity, or a future here over here on the other side of you, you still are sitting and thinking about what you've lost. And, and the regrets, and again, this is 
coming in with that feeling of guilt. In reverse, it's you're fighting with yourself because you're trying to move on from this feeling. For some of you, this isn't going to be everybody's story, but I'm going to go ahead and put it out there, okay? For some of you, there's someone here that keeps pulling you back in. Like, keeps pulling you back in. Keeps pulling you back in. They're playing on this feeling of you feeling guilty. Of you being someone that's loyal or trustworthy. They're playing on this feeling. And that's why you may, for some of you, be looking at this person as in the, this awareness of their emotional um, manipulate, m manipulative kind of energy. For others of you... I don't know why I should stop myself. I did, didn't I? Just cut myself completely off. Something happened here. You see how he's holding the three swords? And he's looking directly at this ace of cups in the reverse. There may have been some sort of betrayal or pain or... This could just, again, be you feeling like you are hurting someone by moving on, walking away. You have the star, yep, yeah, in the reverse at the bottom. Aquarius energy. You also have, look at there, the fool is right underneath that. Which is that new beginning, taking a leap. See, here's the here's the issue. You're taking a leap, you're having a new beginning, you're having to take a risk. And you're taking this risk in this place with the star in reverse where you feel hopeless. It's um, it's when you have to do something that you really don't want to do. It's when you have to take a kind of a deep breath and set yourself free from something. When you really don't want to be in this situation or circumstance to begin with. But you, you have to. Because the star is in reverse. There's something here that no longer is giving you what you need. Um, this is about closing a door. And it makes it so much harder because this was something that, with the star, was something that you wished for. Something that you feel inspired about. Something that you felt blessed about. Some kind of opportunity that you had. You felt really good. You were getting this opportunity. You know, this was something at some point was like a um, gift from the divine, you know. Um, you had hope, gave you hope, and now it, it no longer kind of does that for you, and you know that. But walking away from this, let, uh, releasing this letting go is risky, and it's risky because, you know, it's, you know you're having to put your heart and yourself in a situation where you're creating your own pain, but it's also something that's necessary because you cannot sit in this place to where you just choose to see no flaws here any longer. Oh, okay. Let's see what the future holds, okay? Um, what am I going to use for that, Spirit? Help me out. <laughs> just staring over here into the oblivion. Um, okay, let's just use these. I feel like these will make it complicated, though. I really do. I, I, yeah, I don't want to use those. I don't want to complicate you guys. I think that you have enough going on. <laughs> really. Um, I'm going to use these, actually, which is kind of strange, but I feel... I don't know why. I feel like these would be it, so we're going to use them. These are the um, Once Upon a Dream oracles from Moon Moth Goddess, by the way. What's going to happen in the future? I have to be honest, I'm already I'm already feeling there may be some things in the future, that, and you've kind of known this, but it's going to happen, right? There may be some uncomfortable emotions that you may have to deal with. Maybe you or someone else. There's some uncomfortable emotions that are going to be 
coming into play here, I feel like, in the future that you, you're going to have to deal with. But you've already known this. Tell me about what the future holds for Paul 1 when it comes to this release. Let him go. Okay. So this fell in my lap, and it's blinded. You also have memories. Oh. What's the future hold when it comes... This one almost fell on the floor. And there's that home energy, that Cancer 4th house. Did y'all see that? That diamond just move, and you have date night. Bottom of the deck is... Power. We talked about power, if you remember. Okay, so let's let's talk about this. Come on, diamond. So the diamond fail it reminds me of this card. It used to see no flaws, you know, a diamond being rare in some way. So the fact that you may see something as a rare opportunity or rare can be overshadowing this feeling of needing to do or knowing what to do that's best for yourself. So denying flaws in a situation. Um, in the future here, like I talked about, there's going to be some obstacles that you're going to play out. There may be some sort of power struggle that takes place. This could be internal. This could be with someone, okay? And so take that part, how it resonates. I feel like there may be some kind of conversation. This may have to do with um, somewhere in the home or something, a conversation about memories, a conversation about being blinded to what you feel is safe, secure, or um, solid in some way. So I do feel like that there's some mem memories that come into play here with this. Some memories that maybe blind you in this situation because you do have this familiar, this comfortable feeling it's so hard to walk away from something that you feel so safe, secure, and comfortable with, or you just have at some point. You know, it's been there forever, you know. Um, it's like a house. Yeah, I don't want to leave this house. I mean, I know that I need to, um, but I also know that it's just a feeling of, it feels like home. I don't want to walk away from this. Like, I'm, I like the routine that I'm in. I like the, the way things are. I don't want to have to start over. You know, that that's there. And then this date night, to me, I feel like kind of represents that conversation, whether that's a conversation that you have to have with yourself. It's like an, that intimate conversation that you have to have about, about the situation. You're, you're trying to maintain power. You do, yeah, look at this. There's someone here, I feel like, for, for, you, for those of you where this is a person, there's someone here that is in this yearning energy, right? They're yearning here. They're wanting to mend things here. You have mending. This is someone that's almost kind of in a place of desperate to regain control. That's why I said it's a power struggle. Someone's trying to regain control over the situation, and you're kind of trying to, yeah, free yourself from it. You have adversity here. So this is something that's going to be very difficult to stay in control within the situation. Stay in your power here within this circumstance. Because this is definitely not going to be an easy task. Um, you know, she's holding on to these branches here, having a hard time releasing. But this can also represent that stability, this familiarity, whatever this is, pulling you back in. So this, you are going to go into some sense of a, you could have a little bit of a fight on your hands, that's all. <laughs> a little bit of a power struggle when it comes to doing what you, what you feel like or you know you need to do here for yourself. Someone may try, if this is a person, they may try, they may try all their ways, <laughs> in all the ways to try to maintain the sense of um, foundation that they have here with you. Tell me about memories for the future for Powell 1. Patience. Number 7. Tell me about blinded. There's that passion. <laughs> blinded by passion. Tell me about home. Romance. Tell me about date night. 
friendship. There's, hold on, healing is at the bottom. So in the future, I feel like you're going to go into this place where you do have these memories. This is like allowing, giving something time or giving someone time or having patience with the situation because you do have these memories that are here. Now, even though this is something that's healing, like trying to heal the situation, I do feel like that it ends here with friendship or ends here in a peaceful resolution okay because you know there's this feeling here with romance and home that I'm getting and it's because of this flaws card where you may feel like you're romanticizing or someone's romanticizing the foundation that you have or the place that you are and again, I do feel like that a lot of you are going to be faced with some sort of decision because of that. But I think that it, it, I mean, for whatever the decision is for everybody, I feel like that it ends in resolution. Tell me about uh, patience and memories here for future energies for Paul 1. The Tower. Yeah, there's definitely, that's Scorpio energy, by the way. There's definitely someone here that I feel like, or this is like a sudden shift that takes place. And it takes a lot of patience because you have a lot of memories that's here. Okay, so let's go back to what we talked about in the beginning, despite the other person here, anything else. Let's just talk about you for a second. How we talked about it would be hard to release this, right? Any kind of tower moment that you have, it's definitely going to take some patience to to get used to the new shift that takes place because of the memories that you have. Tell me about um, passion and blinded for future energies. Queen of Wands. So there is really someone here. I feel like for a lot of you. If not, this could be yourself. This is Sagittarius energy for me. So this is that passionate energy. There may be someone here that you're very attracted to. There could be... Um, someone that it's like being blinded by this you know but this could also represent you and you having to be confident having to be strong over this passion like not allowing it to blind you from the flaws that you see whoa okay that's the queen of swords in reverse um this is what I was talking about earlier with cutting this off. Like that Queen of Swords in reverse is, is someone that could be, I mean, someone that's definitely acting out emotionally for sure. And she's upset. You know, the Queen of Swords is someone that's, that's very upset. But this could also represent you cutting someone or something out. And there's this. I think what you're cutting out here is, is romanticizing this foundation in whatever way. You know, you're having to you're having to be this person, this Queen of Swords in reverse. It's almost like having to be kind of cold hearted but not wanting to be. Um, for some of you, you may actually not make this move quite yet. For some of you, there's someone here that may pull you back in or keep you in this foundation where you give in to this temptation in a way and you don't learn from the past or you repeat a cycle. And the reason I can't tell you which is because this is a general reading first off and other than that, everybody has, a, has free will. You have a choice here, okay? Tell me about friendship and date night. The world. I do feel like that for a lot of you, I mean, this the world is closing a chapter and you have friendship and date night here. So I feel like however this does end, it's going to end in reconciliation as far as a resolution takes place. 
They're, you're closing a chapter here, right? You have a Ten of Pentacles in reverse at the bottom of the deck. Some of you could be walking away from a long-term commitment um, from a foundation. That is your foundation right there, that, that Ten of Pentacles and that Nine of Cups. In the future, I will feel like you, you will be happy here with that Nine of Cups. That's a wish fulfillment. So it's whatever happens here at the end of this, for whichever y'all decide, and like I said, it'll be different for everybody, you will be in this place to where you're, you're happy with the outcome. Whether that's staying where you are or moving towards something new. Whatever you decide within going into this next chapter, you will be happy with the outcome of things, okay? I think that's what you need to know the most, the bottom line. Will you stay that way? <laughs> I don't know. If you stay, you know, will you stay that way? I don't know. The Nine of Cups is always somebody that, I mean, to me, it's temporary. It's a temporary thing. It's it's not the Ten of Cups, you know, but you've gotten past the Eight Cups, which is about walking away. So you're sitting in the Nine of, Nine of Cups where you feel comfortable, happy with it, satisfied. I'm satisfied with that. I'm happy with that. You know? Give me some advice here. I just saw the doubtful heart. I've seen it several times. Vibrational blessings number 40. A subtle powerful energy is being sent to you with rewards of pure happiness, peace, prosperity, and well-being. Need some more. Boundaries. Almost there. Yeah, for some of you, and that's number 20. For some of you, look, release desperation is at the bottom, which is the number 23. Wasn't this 23? No, it's 25. Where did I see 23? Anyway, sorry. Is this 23? Nope, 13. Um, that's going to bug me. <laughs> um, Libra is here as well. I don't know if I mentioned that. So, vibrational blessings, number 40. Four again. Um, but then you have this, like the blessings are coming in. Every time you have like this new beginning, as hard as it is sometimes, when you set yourself free, you open yourself up to new things. So the blessings come in, whether you can see them in the beginning or later. It's it's all up to you. That's why that card is, says create your own pain. It's all up to you, you know, how you how you go through this experience. Number 20 is that judgment, which we saw here. And it says, almost there. You're almost there. Don't give up. If you keep following the same path, you will soon reach your dream goal. So this is almost like a, a little bit of a push here, right, from spirit saying, you're almost there. You're almost there. You're almost at that point. Don't allow something to kind of hold you down or pull you back in, in a, in a way. And then you have this boundaries here, number 11. When you don't protect or overprotect your boundaries, your needs go unmet. Review and renew your boundaries. So there's another emphasis on not allowing someone else's needs to go be before your own, right? Now, I'm not talking about an, all, the obvious things. Of course, there's circumstances where we have to do that. I'm talking about not allowing, knowing when a situation is not good for you to where it affects you in your everyday life in a way of... Um, who you are as a person, like it turns you into something that you don't want to be, or you're in just a situation where you don't want to be, needing to do what's for your highest good, for the overall picture, and knowing when to put those boundaries up because of that. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, I want to leave y'all with a postcard from Spirit, actually. So let's do that. And then we'll get some key cards and some initials to close. Oh, I didn't read this one. Number 23. 
Release desperation. Free yourself from the past mistakes by forgiving yourself for what you have done or went through, which is that guilt that you're carrying, I feel like, for some of you. And it's just maybe feeling guilty for having to hurt someone or something like that. That popped out when I said that, so I'm really curious to read it now, um, which I was before, but now I'm even more. <laughs> um, with love. Dear you, check in occasionally with yourself about your motives behind actions that you plan on taking, especially when you have an end game in mind. Is the source of your motivation desire or entitlement? Maybe you're drawn to a certain path because you think that it will bring you a feeling related to the outcome that you seek, like safety or wholeness. Know that you will see a reflection in the outer world of the motive that drives you forward. Do you need a motive? Can you simply be pulled into a direction that your soul calls towards joy, discovery, growth, or adventure? Participating in something compelling and meaningful without trying to define it? That's, I was laughing because that soul's being called here, you know, in that card, which is the release card. If you can step forward, surrendered to whatever spirit has in store for you, you will be amazed at how things turn out. Check your motives and then hand them over to spirit. Everybody here wants the best for you. Life loves you more than you know. I mean, what an awesome way to end this reading. Okay, so let's see. We have sun, moon, and stars. So that's to me when everything aligns or you feel like it aligns. This may be like, I feel like this is a big S, but it may mean something to somebody, but. Let's see. Yeah, reassurance and this moment. Yeah, I think you struggle because you have a hard time. Like, you're wanting reassurance in this moment that you're making the right judgment call for yourself. And that, again, is where you get stuck with that moon. With what goes... The moon... The moon is all about illusions. It's all about de deception, de deceiving yourself. Uh, mental confusion taking place. What is hidden in front of me? What does the future hold? What do I not see? Am I making the right choice, right? You know, all that stuff is there. Okay. So if you get kind of caught into that place where you're looking for that reassurance in the moment that you're making the right decision, then you can kind of stay stuck there. You can kind of get stuck in that place. And if anyone comes around and gives you any kind of inkling that to reassure you in some kind of way, you may hold on to that, you know, too tightly. <clears throat> or if it's the opposite, if they make you feel like you're making the wrong decision, <clears throat> you may overanalyze what they say. Okay. You have the, you have the seashell, and this is kind of strange, but I feel like that there there may be some hermity feeling that go that you go into, like when you go into the hermit energy so that you can like do some soul searching, um, this, there may be just a need for that, like spending some time, spending some time alone so that you can do some soul searching without all the chatter or all the chaos around you, all the, you know, what, what, whether that's advice or just someone else's, the way someone else is feeling about a situation or just whatever it is. It's like, Putting yourself or allowing yourself to, to be in that space of being alone so you can really sit with your own thoughts and work through those own thoughts that you have because that's how you understand what your needs are, not by somebody else telling you what you need, right? Um, I just heard in my head now, what you need is, <laughs> um, we have don't, we have out here, D-O-T dot Q U T N A doubt. You know, it's funny. I kept saying I see a doubt. I see doubtful heart in that card, but it didn't come out. Nation. I just heard in my head. Um, donation. I just heard. I 
just heard a o aioli in my head. <laughs> uh, Tan is right there. Um, and Dan. Dandy. <laughs> Dandelion. There's this song called Dandelion from um, Casey Muskrat. I think that's how you say her name. And it may be relevant here. I can't. I can't even pull up the lyrics in my head to be honest with you. Um, but I don't know why. It just may be relevant here. Okay. All right, guys. I'm gonna hold this up so y'all can see it, and I'm gonna leave you here. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks for all y'all's love and support. I hope this helps. Good luck to you, and I hope to see you soon. Bye. Hey, Pop 2. So if you chose number 25, Goddess of Dreams, Vision, Intuition, and Receptivity. Now, I got kind of excited to do this reading because <laughs> I feel like um, I feel like this is going to be something that you're going to have, especially with this full moon behind this lady, it's like, I do feel like that, or this goddess, let's say, right? <laughs> I do feel like that you will have some sort of spark or idea or vision even. Something that, like, calls you in towards an opportunity, I feel. I feel like you're going to have a decision. And I feel like that this could be something that changes everything for you. I think that there is a lot of emotion that's being put into this. A lot of, it's, you know, like when you ever like have an idea to do something and immediately you're like, oh, I want to do it. I got to do it right now. I mean, that's going to be awesome. Like you get real pumped up that initial excitement that's there. This is what's going to drive you. You're going to have this spark, this idea, this vision, and this is what they're wanting to talk about. Okay. So I'm going to put this to the side. And we're going to pull a few different kinds of oracles. Um, one of the oracles that we're going to choose is this one right here, which I believe... I think that this is called the... I know I was going to check in ball one. I was like, I'm going to check in ball two, and I didn't. Um, but these... I think they're the moon goddess oracles. Yeah, that's right. Moon goddess oracles. Which is funny, because it's like the, the goddess of dreams that's there. So what is it that Pile 2 needs to know about this? About this vision, this receptivity. Abundance. I love it. And it, oh, attraction is here is here too. Can't even talk. Um, with Supermoon. You also have 888 here, which is also like abundance. Um, so, <laughs> this is... I like this. I like this so much. Um, I knew that this was going to be one of those readings. So I feel like that you are going to be stepping into, like you're going to feel on your path. You're going to feel like this is something that is going to, so you may be afraid of this, you know, but this is something that is, you're going to feel very natural in. Like you're going to feel in your element, okay? And like you have that big moon that's there again. And then here you have the super moon. So there's a lot going on here with this emphasis on everything coming to a head. Like it's like everything that you've been working for, everything that you've been experiencing, everything is going to like come to a head. It's going to make sense. So if you've had fears that's been going on here, this is what they're wanting to this is what they're wanting to give your attention to is that there is this feeling of feeling abundance. Also, you may have a lot of eyes on you or you may have followers or somebody or people here that connect with you on an emotional level. There's like rising star energy here. And for some of you, it may be that you, you're finally getting your recognition in some way. I don't know why I've, I keep hearing teacher in my head. So for some of you, maybe you're actually a teacher or this is like being a teacher in some sort of way. You see how she's looking at the moon? She's sitting there looking at the moon and she's on that road. So it's almost like if that's the case, then you're... This is you being called towards this direction, but you may also be attracting others down a particular road or path. 
and you have that super moon that's there, you may be bringing, I feel like I'm talking to some light workers here in a way, but you may be bringing some awareness to others. Like you feel very in your element here around this. There's something here to do with, there's a particular type of charm that goes into this that I feel like you may not give yourself the credit that you deserve within that. Like, this would be like somebody saying good things about you and you're like, eh. <laughs> You know, like you're not giving yourself the credit in some kind of way um, that you deserve. I want to get one more. Hopefully one. Because that's all we got room for. But we'll see what comes out. Um, okay. Knowing your heart, I think, is what the name of these are. Knowing your heart. <clears throat> Something like that. One more. What is the challenge here with this? What is the challenge? That came right out. Look at that. Remember your true self, number 20. Being authentic is the challenge. That's what was throwing me off here with that fox that she's holding because a fox is about deception. Not always, um, but sometimes it can represent that deception. And she's becoming kind of comfortable with this person, you know, or adapting to a situation in a way where you're trying to become more comfortable. It's like there's imposter, imposter syndrome that's going on here, you know, that feeling of, of that, where it's telling you to remember your true self. This is the number 20, which is judgment and tarot. So remember that you got yourself here, you know, remember that to be yourself because that charming energy I was picking up on before is something that you may not give yourself credit for. And it's because of that, that person that you are in a way of, I don't know, there's this charisma or, or this attraction that's here. It's like you don't give yourself credit for that. And that's like the best thing, one of the best things about you, you know? And that's how you've possibly gotten to where you are if you would just allow it to come out fully, you know, be your true self and maintain that, then you will continue down this path of abundance. So reminding yourself of your, your accomplishments or your talents or your ability to attract in. Believing in yourself when it comes to that. That's where the abundance sits. Being your true self. Upholding or following through with some sort of vision that you have. Being receptive to others, you know, in that way. <clears throat> Being your true self around others is something that's really big here. Um, okay, so let's get the tarot. We're going to use this one, this deck here, which is called the Blooming Cat Tarot. I don't know why this deck may be important for somebody. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Could be, um, could be the, maybe you really wanted this deck and you can't find it. <laughs> That's what I see here. Um, or maybe you weren't happy with it or something, but this is the, cats may be relevant here. It's just, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I had to bring that up. Um, hopefully that was somebody's message. This is a deck that I actually got for free um, when I was looking into making my own decks. Um, this is one of the ones that they sent me, and I was so excited when I got it. I was like, what? I get like a deck? A real deck? Okay. I don't know why I had to bring that up, but this is going to be an interesting reading. <laughs> Um, so we have the Queen of Wands in reverse. Exactly. I mean, yes, that's what we see here. This would be, be the Queen of Wands right here to me. Of course you have that Goddess of Dreams, but this is more of like your uh, higher version of yourself, right? 
um, a more like a dreamy idea of who you are. This is actually how you really see yourself in a way. Um, but you have a hard time expressing that or maintaining that. And we're going to figure out why. That's what we're doing. Remembering your true self. It's funny because she has that mask on, you know, and it's the colors of, of this here. You don't have to wear a mask or be somebody else. Just It's saying just to be yourself here. And this is about finding confidence within yourself. You have an eight of wands in reverse. Keep going. Yeah, keep going with that. How do you maintain that? How do you maintain confidence in yourself? God, are we, ask, are we answering that question today? Because that'd be kind of crazy. Let's see. Page of Pentacles in the reverse. It's hard to maintain that confidence in yourself, you know. Um, it's hard to maintain being your true self because we all have insecurities, just like that Queen of Wands being in reverse. You know, normally she's she's the hottest queen there is, right? Um, she's beautiful and she's secure in who she is. That's what makes her so beautiful. She's she's so passionate and she's charismatic. You know, she's. Um, She's all these things, but when she's in reverse, there's some kind of insecurity that's holding her from feeling that way and moving forward with something. You may hesitate on an offer here. Five of Wands in the reverse. Or something may be taking longer than you think, and so you're kind of, it's kind of like putting you into a place that you don't like being. Making you feel uncomfortable. Something here may be making you feel uncomfortable, but it's not the outside circumstances. It's inside. It's an insecurity. You're, you're searching for that confidence. That five of ones in reverse is like, comp, could be competition. Like, try, this is saying like, don't compare yourself to others. But I mean, that's so much easier said than done, right? I mean, we can always remind ourselves of that. But even if you feel, I've noticed on my journey, even if you feel very self-aware, there's still times that, that things can slip you up. You know, you're still constantly learning about yourself because you're being exposed to new experiences. And I think that this is something like a new experience that where you, you know, ultimately what then the idea of this would be, would you stay true to yourself and, and how you've gotten here, you would be in that place to where you would attract who you needed to attract towards you. What was meant for you would come, you know. But you staying in that, in that place to where you feel confident in yourself, that's the way to do it. And comparing yourself to others is not going to get you there, you know. But like I said, that's... Easier said than done because of that insecurity playing out. It's stopping you. It could be stopping you from taking the opportunity. It could be stopping you from being able to feel this experience to its fullest. It, and it's, it's, it's either someone or, or you are procrastinating something. This may even look in the way of someone saying, can we just wait on that? Um, and you're like, what? I was ready to go. Look at that. And it's like, can we just, can we pause for a second? Something is triggering you here. We'll, we'll figure out what it is. Two of Pentacles is here. I think it causes you to get in your head. Um, like you start worrying someone doesn't agree with you or they're looking at some a different, someone else or they're looking in a different direction or they're, moving in a different, taking, choosing someone else, you know, in some way or, but this is just your head. This is just in your head. This is what happens. If there's a bump in the road or an obstacle, this is what happens in a way. You start feeling not good enough. You start to feel like maybe this wasn't meant for me, you know, you start to lose hope almost instantly. Let's figure this out. Why is the Queen of Wands here in reverse? 
The Four of Pentacles in Reverse. Popular card today. <laughs> it's a card of self-awareness, right? And it's funny because I said, you know, the more and more you become self-aware and then you run into a obstacle, sometimes it's take, it takes us harder to look at it or to see it. You may have had a, been having a, a hard time with becoming aware of what those insecurities are or, or what's holding you back. Why is that? Why do I feel this way? You know, what I, that's what I mean. Like when you, when you feel good about yourself and you feel strong within who you are, when you hit a roadblock in some way and it starts to make you feel a way that feels uncomfortable because you're so self-aware, you know, you can recognize it. Then you're like really stuck on it. Like what is making me feel this way? This is not normally who I am you know why do I feel the way that I feel why am I feeling insecure why is the eight of it's like being jealous of something and it's like why am I jealous about that and you're a person that has grown enough within yourself that you can recognize your weaknesses you know and this is something that you know is making you weak um why is the eight of wands in the reverse The Two of Cups in the reverse. Hey, real quick, you know, I love this reading. <laughs> I love this reading. Um, I don't know whose reading this is, but I really like it a lot. Um, it's pulling out these insecurities and in what they're saying. What you need to know is that this right here, you have this, like, somebody may back out on a contract or a even a, maybe a relationship. Um, or it's just there's a pause that's here, a delay in some way. Something that happens here with around some kind of commitment why is the this is what triggers you why is the page of pentacles in the reverse look at that three of swords in the reverse it, it hurts but you try to not let it this is the trigger this is the three of swords there's something here that, that someone procrastinates. Something doesn't take off in the way that it's supposed to. It's like putting off hurt. It's like you're telling yourself not to feel something that you clearly feel. Like you're telling yourself, don't feel that way. It's like when someone like would say they, okay, let's just say that someone was said they would go on a trip with you. Yeah, I'm going to go on this trip with you. I'm going to have so much fun. We're going to do this and that. And they felt like good about it. And they, but then it came up to the day and then that person was like, ah, something came up. I'm not going to make it. You start to feel so like insecure about, okay, well, okay, okay. Well, did they just not want to go with me? Like, like you start to go into these feelings, right? And you tell yourself, no, don't feel that way. Just don't even go there until we know for sure. Like, let's not think about that. Because of all those insecurities, that makes, that hurts, you know, those thoughts that you have about yourself and the reasons that, I mean, that it's not a good feeling. But we, we sometimes can't keep ourselves from feeling certain ways. So they're wanting you to address this trigger and why it's there. And I think that you realize that. So why is the five of wands in the reverse? Whew, I hope you are staying with this reading because I am. I feel like I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> um, you have a knight of pentacles in the reverse. Again, the stuck feeling. There's, there's deeper things that go within this. There's deeper things here. The knight of pentacles in the reverse. What is this? Five of wands. What, what is that that I'm feeling? The Eight of Pentacles in reverse. Again. Taking a break. Oh. There's some sort of delay or something that happens here. This is like needing to take a break or take the time out so that you can work on yourself. Um, don't see this as being stuck, okay? Because there's power in this. You can make this work for you or against you. And it's saying use this time to work, to help it to work for you. And 
allowing yourself to accept the situation so that you can use this time. It's saying we're, this isn't something that we're giving you as a roadblock. This is actually something that we're giving you as an opportunity, an opportunity to take some time to yourself to build confidence in yourself moving forward. If you've in a situation like this, if you said to yourself, please help give me more confidence or please let me step into my confidence in some way and but you're not ready for it, why, why wouldn't spirit give you some time to work on that? So regardless of what happens, you still are building your confidence. You're using this blockage, this obstacle to work for you, not against you. You see? Why is the two of pentacles here? Two cards. Well, three. <laughs> uh, one more fell out here. <laughs> it's in reverse though, which I think is important. These two right here, King of Swords in reverse and the Three of Pentacles for the Two of Pentacles. So there's somebody here that you could be waiting on making a decision around commitment, um, committing to something or working something out, whether or not you're going to work with somebody, whether or not you can work something else, whether or not you can work together. Um, this is that deceptive energy. This is Aquarius energy with the um, King of Swords in reverse. Someone you can't trust, you know, don't know if you can trust the situation or you're just unclear of what the, what's going on here, you know. Um, and so you, again, in your mind, you go back and forth, back and forth with, okay, this, uh, I'm just kind of floating in air here. Like, I don't know if, are we working this out? Are we committed? Are, are we in a commitment? Like, I don't know what's going on here. Like, you know, and you start to kind of get into your mindset with that two of pentacles where you start juggling ideas here of what to do things don't go in the direction that you need them to what is this three of wands in the reverse <laughs> it's just what i said things don't go in the direction that you need them to this is what you're juggling see the three and the three with the two king of swords in reverse you don't know about the future what the future holds you're looking for other commitments okay so one of the advice things that they're saying here is that while you're in this space think about other commitments that you could be making to yourself to others in some kind of way to help you grow to help you build um in the meantime so that you're not like sitting around waiting for one pinnacle to come you have two pinnacles that you that's going to put you into a place to where you feel more comfortable so when you feel more comfortable, you continue to stay your true self. And I think that's something that's really important here as well. So how do you feel comfortable within this dynamic here? Well, instead of getting too far in your head and, and feeling insecure, you, you use the time wisely um, to work on yourself and work on your confidence. When you work on whatever this is too for you guys, if this is actually work, it's like continue to grow, continue to build, continue to study, continue to get to that place. And use this as your benefit, right? The other way that you start to feel more comfortable is if you give yourself um, that idea of perhaps going back to the drawing board. Maybe there's other things that I can be committing to at this time. Um, I don't want to just sit here and wait for this one pinnacle, you know. I need, what if I need a backup? What if I need something else? But I always have this, you know, that, that that's something that's there. And versus this working, this working out. Because that's going to give you a place of feeling more secure because you have other options, right? Okay. What's the bottom of the deck? <laughs> I love that. Ace of Wands. That's that, what she's holding, you know, that little, um, that little piece of light in her hand, that opportunity that's there is that Ace of Wands. And the Four of Wands is under that, which is awesome with the Six of Cups as well. Um, also, uh, something here is friends, family, um, people that you can be around or you feel like you can really be yourself, those are the connections that they're saying here to focus on if you focus at all. Um, like, be drawn towards or, or communicate. Like, if you feel 
insecure about something, it's it's important to be around, and this is how we're, 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 we help each other. It's important to be around other people that connect with you and, and know you really well and make you feel able to be yourself, make you feel comfortable. Um, because they, they, they're that foundation for you. And it's, no, it's not a codependent way. It's a way of we're human beings and we need each other. And that's okay. It's social connection. It's intimate connection. Um, it's having someone there, like this cat here, to put your arm around you and say, listen, I love you. <laughs> You're amazing. You know, and make you feel good about who you are. Um, that can pull us out of things and together here you have these five ones which is here which it has to do with um, being when you start to get confused or conflicted someone that can pull you out of it or help remind you that's all interesting okay um next because I feel like we're kind of oh you know what I'm gonna use some of these these are the um, these are actually love and romance and I don't know why I want to use these but <laughs> I'm gonna for your reading I haven't used these in a while but I feel drawn to it so these are kind of different what What does Paul 2 need to know? What does Paul 2 need to know moving forward? And dressing up. An opportunity to dress up and party. Fun times are ahead. So there you go. That's one of the things you need to know. Wish. So this could be a wish that you have, right? Someone you wish for is coming into your life. What else do you need to know? Now, take these as they resonate because these are love and romance. And if this is a situation that's not that, you know, something else. This could just be like a wish that you've had um, is coming into your life. Something that you wanted. Funny, I mentioned dandelions in the last reading. <laughs> something that you've wished for. Look at that. That is so awesome. <laughs> I love it. It's so awesome. Attraction and attraction right, right on top of each other. And well, you do have wish and abundance right on top of each other as well. So you are attracting the right person at the right time into your life. Anything else? <laughs> okay. As I say that, they're like, yeah. Adventures here. Um, you have all three of the great A's. Abundance, attraction, and adventure. <laughs> and you also have surprises, because why not, at the bottom of the deck. I love y'all's reading. This is great. It says, seek adventure together. It adds excitement to your journey. So you can see she's like in that full energy, about to take that leap. long pause for some coffee because y'all's reading is very high energy. Um, you have this nurture there, right? This is important. I'm going to read this to you. Nurture your relationships like blooming flowers. They'll flourish. Very um, intimate, close relationships are really important for you at this time. Um, and surprises here. Romantic surprises are on the horizon. Be open to them. So for some of you, there's some some kind of romantic surprise. That is very interesting, isn't it? Um, romantic surprise. Some of you, you may have a romantic surprise playing out here very soon, which is so exciting. Um, and that could be, you know, if you're with somebody or not, there's some maybe some sort of surprise that's going to come in here very soon for you. I don't even know what to get, guys. <laughs> I'm just excited for you. I want to leave you here. So, I guess let's get some advice about the two things that would help you in this process, right? 
or three actually, because I did mention uh, family, friends, and people that make you feel like yourself. Sometimes random strangers can make us feel more like ourselves than anybody because they're our stranger. Um, I don't know why I feel like that. I don't know why that just came to mind, but I think it's that imposter syndrome thing. Let's see. Let's see what the advice is about. What advice do you have for Paul too? Mystical journey number 55. Discovering your true north is a process of continuous change. Be patient with yourself when you feel lost or a little confused. Well, if that ain't advice for this reading. Um, yeah, this is what I was talking about, about when you, when you feel that trigger come on, you feel those insecurities, and you're like, why am I feeling this way? Calm down. You know, you tell yourself just why I don't like feeling this way because you're so self-aware to it. Allowing yourself to, to step into these other things that can make you feel comfortable in the midst of this other stuff going on, right? So you find that sense of security um, within yourself. Anything else? Because you are in the right place. I have to tell you all that. You are definitely, most definitely in the right place at the right time. You're, you're on the right path. I don't know why maybe somebody needed to hear that, but... Um, Thrive. Absolutely. Number 18, which is the moon. Imagine that. Um, grief. Um, make the best of, of the blessings in your life and concentrate on what's working. Your angels are clearing the way for you. So you don't know why this blockage is here. You don't know why this obstacle could be here, right? And I don't think you need to because they're using this as telling you, you know, just, just maintain this self energy here. Don't worry about what's going on right now with what this is. Just continue to grow and build yourself and give yourself some other ideas or options that are here because this is an opportunity for you to build on your confidence, build yourself. Um, yeah. Okay. Be watchful. Number 15. So the 15 is the devil in tarot. Okay. So it says, be on alert and aware of your surroundings. There's red flags that you're ignoring. Allow the truth to be revealed. I think that, hold on. I'm most definitely going to have to pull a card for that. Oh, not that one. Not that one. Let's get a Kipper card. Now, I do feel like that it's it, 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 telling you to acknowledge that red flag or that insecurity will help you. Don't ignore it, you know. Just accept it. There's a le level of accepting that in yourself that's here if we don't accept we can't free ourselves from it so accepting how you feel is something that's here okay what else is there let's be watchful for Paul too concern be careful here when it comes to someone here that may be concerned about this or concerned about you what is this child. It's number 18. Great fortune is here. Be watchful. Now, if it's not re return, if it's not concerned about a child, be watchful. One more. I think somebody's afraid. I think Something something happens here where there's someone that kind of is afraid or concerned about you being naive. Don't allow their, they're projecting, don't allow their insecurities to affect your confidence or your situation. Don't let, allow them to put doubt in your, in your head. There's someone here, it's, it's them playing off of their, their concerns are coming from a innocent place, but they're not seeing how they're projecting. It has to do with their own insecurities. Um, yeah, I landed on despair, number 32. Some of you, their insecurity is they may feel like that this will put you too far away from them. Um, or 
See the sign that says not hiring on it? This person could be afraid of losing you in some way. But it's coming out in a play in more of like, a, oh, I'm concerned about you because I think you may be being naive to a situation. Or there's just like somebody putting fear in your head. They see you as naive in some way. This could even be a projection of someone feeling naive about a situation on their own. Where they allowed something to happen or they, they didn't succeed in some way. So they're putting that fear in your head. I don't want to get too far into that. I don't want to get into... I am not going to ruin y'all's reading by getting too far into that. <laughs> We're going to stop right there. And I'm going to pull a postcard from Spirit. Um, But that is definitely someone else's stuff, you know. So if you have someone around you that's just like, Hey, I'm concerned about, you know, this or that or whatever. Or saying things that are uncomfortable or you don't feel good about. Um, this says, be on alert and aware of your surroundings. There's a red flag that you're ignoring. Allow the truth to be revealed. So accept that the truth, that that's their truth, not yours. Okay? Okay. What postcard do you have for Pile 2? Boss, moving forward for Pile 2, please. You are a divine beauty. I <laughs> love that y'all got that card. Um... Okay, dear you, <clears throat> the simple yet powerful law of cause and effect means that everything is in relationship. Every action on this earth has a consequence, and even in the spirit world, there are consequences for every action that on your, are taken on your behalf. Right now, you're facing conditions that were set into motion by past decisions. Consequences are coming into being into your favor. They will remind you that by making good choices and listening to your intuition, <laughs> pay off. If some things are a little off or uncertain, know that whatever you are facing, you can step beyond it by using your imagination and acting on it instead of reacting to what is being presented. That is exactly what's happening here. Um, Everything that you think and do has far-reaching reverberations in the web of life. Move to your highest ground and have faith that what goes around comes around. The universe is always self-correcting anyway. Isn't that amazing? How we adore you. All right, guys. That's, I love it. When the, which they always do those cards, the reading, the end of it is just like, it's just a perfect way to end the reading, right? Okay, so let's see. Oops. We have, your stories are all you have. Change your story. Change your life. Write your, write your way to greatness today. And then we have, you are a soul living in a flesh temple made of stardust, riding a rock through space, don't sweat the small stuff. You are pure magic and mystery. So there you go. It's telling you don't sweat this. <laughs> don't be sweating about this. Um, <clears throat> I want to read that first one again. Your stories are all you have. Change your story. Change your life. Write your way to greatness today. Look at that. <laughs> it's awesome. You got that. 301 sitting upright. So... <clears throat> you may have to wait here, some of you. That's what we've been talking about, that blockage. Um, but the three of wands is about expansion and growth and staying focused, staying focused on something paying off for you. It's also, most importantly, that self-confidence, believing in yourself that you're capable. And um, there may be a long uh, distance relationship here that may be important to you. Let's get a few more. Okay. You have, yeah, you have the thread here. So that could be that attachment that you have or connection. But you also have the actual thread, which is the same color, which is kind of awesome. Um, there, this is more like a rope 
material, but um, cutting the cords what you need, cutting the cords of what you need to cut is something that's here. Cutting the attachments, that is coming up again. Don't attach yourself to someone else's advice as it being yours. So if something triggers you or someone triggers you, don't get stuck on it is what they're saying. Don't take that on as that like, is it advice to yourself or puts yourself down in some kind of way. Anyway, pulled me back in. Um, okay, let's, let's move on. So you have the piglet here. So be curious. Be curious just like this car said he says here. Everything you think and do has far-reaching re reverberations in the web of life. Move to higher ground and have faith that what goes around comes around. So believing that you are worthy is really important. That's what goes around comes around. You know, and Piglet's happy here. Just want to point out. Um, like, hmm, okay, well, wonder why Spirit's throwing this obstacle in. Maybe there's something else I need to focus on at this time. You know, that's there. Wow, well, wait. <laughs> you have that contract with the two cups that's there. You have an L, a J, an A, a G, and an N. Language is something I just heard in my head. Okay, guys. I mean, I'm just going to hold this up because that's it. That's all we got. Um... All right. I heard Jan in my head too. And Gal is down there. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, so thanks so much for being here. Thanks for all your love and support and all your kindness, of course. I hope this helps. Good luck, and I hope to see you soon. Hey, Paul. Three. So if you chose number 29, connections. This is partnerships, contracts, and commitment. So what do you need to know, Pile 3? You see this emerald that, that they're holding here and this hand that's coming down to it with the sun in the background, you know. Um, number 11 is here, being on the, on the right path. Someone, I feel like, is in your path. There's some sort of partnership or contract or commitment that is being offered here. Um, Something that could be worth great value, something that is could bring in a lot of joy and happiness, success, um, and you're like in this place to where she hasn't touched it yet, you know. I don't know why I'm focused on the fact that there's still this. She hasn't actually touched the significance of, of the emeralds here yet. It's like you almost have this commitment, maybe. You almost have this contract. You almost have this partnership. It's just in, right there. Hmm. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Okay, so Moon Goddess Oracles. That's what we're going to start with. I also have some other oracles I'm going to pull. Let's see what comes from this, and then we'll see what the challenge is. Tell me about what does Pile 3 need to know about this? Wow. I don't know about y'all, but that just took my breath away. That is insane. <laughs> Isn't that insane? Wow. Um, this is about, this is awesome. <laughs> I mean, I love it. Spirit's on it today. Um, so this is the number four. This is it again. This is a, um, a, this is, sorry, I have to bring myself back down for a minute. That is acceptance. That's accepting a situation. I'm going to take that card. Um, I mean, the reason I'm taking this card, just so you're aware, is because one of these almost flipped out, but it didn't. It flipped over my thumb and went back in, and I thought, did I do that, or was that meant to happen? And then this card didn't pick up, so I'm assuming that 
there's another card that needed to be out. So we'll look at it in a second. But acceptance, accepting, there's this accepting a connection, accepting a commitment. I don't think that you're quite there yet, though. I think this is you going into a place to where you are accepting a connection. Or someone else is with you, right? The path. See, even, even on here, she's sitting here with her hands behind her back, looking at this, going, there's a whole nother perspective there. There's a whole nother chapter that's there from where she is. It's clearer here. It doesn't mean that there aren't obstacles or, or roads ahead that you can't see, but momentarily here, it's clearer. But it's also a picture. This is what she's contemplating. This is like moon energy here. This is what she's sitting here. She's looking at this and she's saying, is this an illusion? You could be in a relationship here where you are, you're hesitating because you're feeling like if this is too good to be true. What's that song? Um, just don't be too good to be true. Be, be good to me, but just don't be good, too good to be true. Something like that is there. So there's this contemplation that's here. Maybe there's, this has been a very difficult road or a long road. A long road here. There's a way out, you know? Looking for a way out. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> it's my favorite word, guys. I use it all the time. You know, even not in tarot. <laughs> I just use it all the time. Interesting is my favorite word. Um, I'm sorry that I say it so much. This may be coming from the more feminine perspective, just so you're aware. I don't know why I need to say that. What is the challenge here? What's the challenge? Remember your perfection, number nine. Can you see anything? <laughs> to watch these cards. Remember your perfection. This is the challenge. Something seeming too perfect, too good to be true. Remember your perfection. Number nine is hermit. And it's also the ninth house is, oh, you know, Sagittarius. It's Jupiter energy that's coming in right now. Um, but this timeless reading, but it's like you're you're trying to go within, you know, like that hermited energy, needing to go within to remember or for some of you, like, is this meant for me? Feeling like this could be too good to be true. Is this meant for me in some way? But you're just kind of, there's someone here, the challenge could be too, is that you're kind of just barely... It's like you're sticking one foot in the water, but you're not putting your whole body in quite yet. That's what I keep picking up on here and here. You recognize the abundance that's here. And there's there's definitely love that's here. But you may be letting go of your freedom in some way, or you're trying to find peace with taking this path. And, and, and the, you feel, you just have this like fear that this is too good to be true. That kind of feeling. This bottom of the deck says leap and find your wings. Number 26. So you may be having a hard time taking a risk is what I gather from that. Which I'm going to leave out. Like, is this too good to be true? something about this being difficult as well like you know that this is going to be difficult if you this is not going to be the easiest situation for some of you getting into something new or being with someone or accepting this partnership or this commitment in some way you know that it's going to be difficult some of you also may be looking at options or what your options are in this 
because you're thinking about or you're accepting something. You're taking, you're in this place here where there's obviously a risk that's on the table. Some kind of, you have to take a leap of faith here in something. And you're hesitant to do that. You're starting to feel, is this too good to be true kind of feeling. Okay. One more shuffle, guys. Sorry. I had to pull myself out of that for a second. Here's a choice that you're going to have to make, I feel. What does this have to do with? Well, that came right out, didn't it? There's a coin of pentacles that's here. Um, it's the masculine coin of pentacles, too. It's a messenger of swords, so there's some kind of a message, truth, that's here. Communication. Queen of Pentacles, you have the sacred... Uh, sacred Masculine, which is the Emperor Aries energy. You also have a, a Taurus there for me. And then you have a, a, knight, a Action of Cups, which is the Knight of Cups. Give me one more. Someone's coming towards you teacher. I love this card. I actually referred to um, a teacher in one of the other piles, but anyway. Um, the teacher, this is the Hierophant, so that Taurus energy is here. Taurus could be really important or relevant in your chart. Okay. You have it may have a Taurus Venus. Anyway. Um, I, the only reason I know that or feel that is because I actually am a Taurus Venus. <laughs> so, um, but it's, it's, you have that Taurus energy here with the Hierophant and it's connected, connecting to this idea of partnerships and love and connection. So, and it's funny too, Taurus energy is the second house, which is about like your possessions, what you possess, what you have. What you depend on. This is your thought process. This is what you're trying to figure out. It's like walking into a situation where you look at it and you say, okay, I'm accepting this for what it is. I know that this is something that is... Like this is something that I'm going to have here or have to work with or have to deal with here. It's not going to be an easy situation moving forward. Am I, is this too good to be true? So there's fear that steps in here somehow. You have someone coming towards you here. Um, you have divine masculine energy. Someone taking the lead or taking action towards a commitment or wanting to take action towards a commitment. It's on the table right in front of me. Burbank, I'm like right there. <laughs> it's right there. This is the, ma the divine masculine emperor here taking action romantic action here towards a, a commitment, towards a partnership. Um, so this can be having to do with being honest with yourself or accepting. You're having this communication come in where someone sees you as this stable, supportive, nurturing, loving, caring person, right? And I think they're wanting to commit to you. I think they're wanting some kind of commitment from you. Why is the, um, the page of swords here? The Eight of Swords. This is going to put you in your head. You're going to, yeah, this is going to put you in your head. This is going to be, jeez. Oh, um, sorry, I just had that feeling come over me. And it's a feeling of, let me describe it. It feels overwhelmed. It's a feeling of feeling like your frustration, but if there's just a, there's not really an anger or any kind of like that behind it. It's just like, I'm just frustrated that this is, I have to deal with this or that I have to think about this. I'm frustrated I even have to think about this. Like, or I'm, I'm this is just like something else on my plate or something else that I have to think about or there's pressure that's here. It's like a 10 of wands is what I'm feeling with these swords. And the reason is because it's not something that you can put down. It's something that you have to decide on, right? Something that you have to decide on. Being stuck in your head. And for some of you, this could be like, the truth is that I'm just really in my head here about this. Or I feel stuck. Or I feel like I don't know. 
Like I'm just going to always be stuck here in this place or feeling this way. But this could also be you keeping yourself stuck. You know, worry this is something too, this is like too good to be true kind of feeling. That's what you need to know. You need to know if you are holding yourself back or if you're seeing something clearly. That's what you need to know. But there's an action that's going on behind this that is going to put you into that place to where you have to make some sort of decision, I feel. Why is the Queen of Pentacles? Look at that. Sacred Feminine. So you have Emperor and Empress Energy out on the table. This is something not, like you seeing someone as a, as a particular way, but it's not growing, going anywhere. The, the, the feminine energy that's here, this, this Empress energy, it's not moving. You know, this is also dependent. So can you depend on somebody in some way that's there? This is also like somebody that could be smothering, you know, or in some kind of way you, f you feel less free, you know, like what we saw earlier. This could be someone that's loving and nurturing and all those things, but they're not, like you don't see it going anywhere. Or it's causing you to feel insecure. Either you or someone around you feels insecure with a commitment in some way. And it's playing out in a way of something being too good to be true. Okay. I hope that made sense. Why is the... I also hear somebody saying, I knew this was too good to be true. So anyway, why is the emperor here? Look at that. Nine of swords. There's nine swords here. I don't, I don't like this because I feel like there's two people... One acting out of insecurity and one acting out of fear or worry. If you're in a foundation with someone right now, this is saying don't make a choice of commitment or stability or contract or something like that based off of where you are with that person at this time because you're both playing out of some insecurities and some fears. You're not, I do feel like the feminine energies here, her insecurities aren't, I, I hate to say this, this just sounds real bad. I don't know how else to say it. And I don't mean this in any way either. They're, I'm still searching for another way to say this. Um, the feminine energy, they're, insecurities aren't valid in a way where they're actually there's something tangible to it it's a coming from the inside but it could be because of a situation where um, they were stuck in their head at some point here because this empress is upside down she's looking at the eight of swords and it's connected to the the truth of something here or honesty here with this page of swords and using your head having to use your head and you're you're both in a way using your head but you're using your head through those insecurities through those fears um now i do feel like that the masculine energy as far as being in a nine of swords is valid whether that's someone bringing anxiety to you or or someone that is anxious why is the action of cups here the chariot in reverse yeah 
this is when the chariot you feel like that it's not in, you're not in control of something so you do something to try to regain your sense of control mental control and that could be through an act of love an act of um, taking action towards I need to take action towards this so I can try to get this chariot in, in under control that's what some that's the way somebody's acting they're acting out of fear they're not acting out of Um, a place that is about how do I describe that how do I describe that cancer energy is there by the way the three of pentacles in reverse I mean it's they want something to work and they feel like they're losing that in some way and so they take this it's like an act of romance or how do I express this out on a limb like taking a leap but it's not coming from a place of oh I feel inspired to take this direction I feel like this is the right thing you know and, and stuff like that it's coming from a place of oh I got to get this under control or I'm going to lose this why is the hierophant here a liberation. By having this commitment, this partnership, this contract, it brings in a new beginning, of course, but with judgment being here and what we just talked about, this to me is like someone that makes a decision in order to release the anxieties and fears give me one more card for that yeah that five of swords this may be how someone deals with conflict resolution that's what this person is wanting Resolution in some way. Freedom. Freedom from whatever this Eight of Swords is, which is, the, let's, let, let's ask that. It could be gossip or communication, something to do with communication, being a burden. We have action of Pentacles stuck. I was, yeah, this is stuck energy that's here. The Knight of Pentacles in reverse. That's stuck on something. Someone that's stuck on something. The Five of Cups in reverse. Some sort of regret, disappointment, mistake. Something that caused pain. Somebody's trying to move on from something, being stuck on something that caused pain at some point. Being trapped in your head and in a place to where you're trying to get out of that. Someone trying to get out of that. And someone takes some sort of action here around a judgment call, a renewal, trying to have a renewal, trying to start over in a way. Making a commitment to start over this is like coming in in the form of a romantic gesture. But it is coming to the other person based off of anxiety. I'm afraid that this is going to happen, so I'm doing this. It's like, a, it's like a simple fix or a quick resolution, but it doesn't really heal the situation. It's just, it may be like a temporary strength patience it's in order to make something stronger or it's a temporary fix until something heals um, Leo energy high priestess in reverse okay Taurus Pisces Scorpio cancer It's to, it's buying, it's like, oh, I almost said buying time. I almost said buying time. The lovers. That high priestess in reverse is not something that I'm, I don't like.
It's like when something doesn't sit with you right. It's a choice. Making this choice, making a choice, doesn't quite sit with you right. There's a lesson behind this, like a, a, a big lesson behind this. What is that about, that lesson? <laughs> you have the hanged one, the hanged man, Virgo energy. Gemini's here too. Um, so what is this lesson here about? Seeing a different perspective, seeing someone else's perspective. This I feel like is a deeper thing. There's something to do, okay, hear me out. There's something to do with this overall experience that is meant to change someone's perspective on a past situation there's healing here within this dynamic and what happens, but it has to do with a past situation where you see someone else's point of view or perspective that helps give you strength, closure. There's some sort of understanding that you gather here from this, where it's like see, being able to see the other person's perspective or choice. Hmm. Could be around a relationship, you know. Could be one for the high priestess. Sorry, guys. There's more here. Yeah, the nurture of swords. There's something here to do with some sort of, for some of you, secret relationship of some sort or a choice um there's something to do with this knight of swords not learning from the past is the way i'm seeing this because of that hierophant and that judgment this is like making choice or leaning towards a direction where you feel like maybe I'm not learning from my past. You're getting a different perspective of this. This is a mirror to you as well. It's mirroring something back to you. Okay, I'm going to pull myself out of that because I feel like I'm confusing. Um, let me refresh. What's going to happen here moving forward? Something doesn't feel right here. That's what's creating conflict. There's something about this situation when this happens, you just don't feel right about it. And your intuition is all over this. But you're, there's a feeling of, well, I just need to be, I need to have a lot of internal strength or something is going to take a lot of internal strength. An acknowledgement of that. Like, yeah, this is going to be, this is going to take a lot of strength for me to see this in a different perspective anyway okay did it again pulled me back back in there didn't it tell me more about what are let's focus on this for a second i think this would be helpful moving forward so the feminine insecurities that are playing out here with the sacred feminine what is that about taurus libra what is this about capricorn here too i feel what is this about virgo could be one of those signs or you could be embottling this if you're the feminine here you could be embottling this um very grounded or needing to needing to find balance or stability in some way with that queen of pentacles needing security or, or safety and the empress in reverse the devil in reverse capricorn it's weird i, I felt the need to say capricorn um candle is loud isn't it <laughs> um <coughs> this is releasing yourself 
releasing yourself of a toxic, something toxic, something that's not good for you. If this is the feminine energy, this is looking at it and saying, okay, is this supportive? Is this stable? Will this bloom? Are there, if this was a garden, it would be like, are there pests here? Like, um, that are eating my plants, you know? What do I need to get rid of here in this scenario? What action do I need to take? But it's being, it's being looking through the lens of these insecurities. So it'd be like looking at your garden and feeling like something's wrong with it. But in your head, you're like, is there, it, are there pests here? Or am I just seeing this because I've dealt with that before. And so now I'm really worried about that. You know, that's something that's there. So energy of trying to free yourself or release yourself from that feeling. And the masculine energy, which is in the nine of swords. What's the nine of swords? No, seven of cups. Somebody's looking at their options here. Because of fear. Because of the nine of swords. Worry. They're looking at their options. What do I do? What do I do? They're wanting to protect something. I think the masculine's afraid that the feminine is seeing the relationship or connection as toxic in some way. Or there's some toxic things playing out that they're seeing or recognizing. That's when they're in this, they're in their power because they're, they're feeling uncomfortable. They're feeling this way and they know they need to do something about it. And again, you have those hands. That <laughs> is so cool. Um, yeah, so it's like, I need to do something about this. You may not be on the same page with this person or feel like you're not on the same page here. You have the hands going in opposite directions. So it's like, here you have deception, the heart, feelings, and a new beginning, starting over our faith. And then over here you have transformation or change, wanting something to be different, wanting to start a new cycle with that fresh plant there as well. Seeing abundance and growth and um, something worth investing into, right, is here. But that mushroom's in the middle because you're playing out through your shadow selves when it comes to making these choices. This is what, I think the, the masculine somewhat recognizes this or has a certain sense of self-awareness that's here. Knowing that, you know, the masculine needs to step into their power or take control in the situation. But the problem is, is that they still have this Nine of Swords upright. So they're still coming from an anxious place. What an interesting read. What's going to happen here moving forward? What do they need to know about this moving forward? What would be helpful? Moving forward. Nine of Cups. Justice in Reverse. By playing this out in this way, it's like neither one of you are really truly getting what it is that you want um, out of the situation. There are also maybe some karma here that's playing out in some way over a choice that was made. Six of Wands in the reverse. The Ten of Cups. What do they need to know here the most? You're both focused on on things independently here. You're not focused on the bigger picture. You're both focused in and what you can get or gain from the situation in this present moment. And by doing that, you're not being fair here. Um, you're not being fair here to one another in some way. This is what's playing out or what's going to play out. There's this feeling of feeling let down or feeling like something... It's like not fully recognizing something for what it is or not fully giving someone recognition. It's like you can get to the nine, but that's an independent number. But you can get to the nine. You just don't feel like the 10 would be successful. You don't feel like that it's, it's fair or equal in some way. What's that? 
more about this. They need, really need to know about this. Yeah, the Five of Pentacles. Hmm. You're looking at your happiness through a lack mentality. Not what I have and what I'm getting, but what I could be losing. That's the overall what the two of you are playing this out as. You're not looking at what you could be gaining from this situation as much as you're looking at what you could be losing from the situation. And somebody is self-focused with that. Someone is focused more on the connection itself. There's someone here that's a, protecting themselves or in a fearful place. Feminine energy. They're always being in a fearful place that they're trying to release themselves from. They don't feel good about it. Justice in reverse. Yeah, the Eight of Pentacles in reverse. Moving forward or the, pro the progress that you've made or making progress, like I said before, giving someone credit is not here. It's like not giving someone credit for their work. Neither of you feel as valued as you want to feel. It's karma playing out due to something. Some kind of experience that left you both feeling fear, afraid. This toxic toxicities left you both feeling in a place of anxieties, stress, fear, related. So you're, you're having a hard time seeing the reflection of your work or something moving forward or progressing because there's an imbalance that's here. You want this wish. You, you have this desire, but you feel like you're not getting it um, to its fullest. It's like this emerald. Like, yeah, you have this emerald in your hand, but you can't touch it. You can't have it. You can't reach it. It's like, yeah, the potential is here, but it's not coming together. It's not, you're not being successful with this. You're not getting recognition here like you really want. Why is the six of, one's in the reverse, ace of pentacles. There is this opportunity that's here um, that takes place. There may even be some sort of comp uh, conversation around fairness and balance and just and moving forward and working together and or taking a break even um, that's here. For some of you, this could be taking a break that you don't. It's like you're accepting that, but it's not really what you want. For others of you, this is acknowledgement of something not working right and needing to make adjustments there in order to be successful because you are both in this place of you see this as emotional fulfillment, you know. Um, you still see the potential here. The star in the reverse, and you don't want to lose hope. You don't want to lose hope in this situation because you still see the potential here. For some of you, there may be a break. For some of you, there may not be. And that's going to be a little different for everybody, how that goes. The tower in reverse. It will shift diff differently here for everybody. Um, this ace of pentacles, this opportunity. You will get this opportunity. It's an opportunity to change things. You will get that. It may come kind of sudden, but you're going to have a realization here about what is emotional fulfillment here for you. And for some of you, this is this, and for some of you, it isn't. Okay. You have the Ten of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck in reverse. The Ace of Cups in reverse and the Ace of Swords. Three of Swords in reverse. Yep, and the Four of Swords. So there's some 
Overthinking. Overthinking that's here. That Three of Swords is healing from something. The Ace of Swords is the truth, is the conversation. This is like, are you ever going to go get over this? The Ace of Cups is maybe being overly emotional. Maybe keeping your emotions to yourself about a situation. You know, feeling, maybe feeling somewhat emotionally drained over something. Someone having a conversation about what's draining them in this relationship. Um, and that Ten of Pentacles is... Could be like, you know, what's draining me here in this relationship is that I, I can't ever feel secure or I never feel like it's stable or maybe it doesn't stay that way for long or I can't get back to where I wanted to be or we need to let go of the way things were so that we can have a new foundation, you know. Definitely overall recognizing the importance of this relationship is here for both of you. Um, this reading went in the most bizarre direction, right? I'm actually going to use the... Yeah, something's toxic here and there's this grass is greener. And this is the overall feelings that you're feeling. Better option, unhappy, deserves better, jealousy. Like these uncomfortable feelings. That make you think in ways that normally maybe you wouldn't. There's something here that's the root cause of that. And it's some decision that someone made. Maybe to not listen to their intuition or to cut someone. To, they chose someone else even. There's something that's there with that Queen of Swords in the reverse. And the lovers. At some point, maybe there was something that caused some kind of... Someone that's bitter. Someone's bitter about something here. Or, or upset. You know, I don't want to say bitter, but there's this that that's there. What's the future hold here? Let's not do that. Let's just say, because there's a choice, it, you know, free will is here. What, what do they need to know about? What does Pile 3 need to know? Social media. This may play a part into this. There may be some spying going on or there's just like reminiscing or someone there's, there's something here that may cause, cause confusion or may play a big role in this. What do they need to know right now? What do they need to know? Ugh, I saw this earlier. I tried not to see it, but it was underneath the um, grass is greener. You have player here. Charming, manipulative, karmic, being tested. Anxiety. Stress, depression, panic attacks, and restlessness. Okay. There may be somebody here that has fear over, over, I mean, I feel like this is the masculine energy again. Um, just because that's the anxiety that we picked up on earlier, but liquid courage is at the bottom of the deck. So someone, and date, new love, third party, travel, and proposal heartbreak I think somebody's trying to heal a situation because they feel like there's been some kind of interference whether that's in the past or present they're wanting to go into a new phase here and they're having to find their courage to do that but I think it's again coming from a place of fear I think one of you is it's, it's like being afraid of what you're seeing. Like social media, you know, a lot is just not real. Um, and it's like being afraid of what you're seeing as it being the truth. Yeah. Feeling restless about this. There's a conversation that's going to be here, so just so you're aware of that. Um, I want to see what this person would say to you. Why not? 
let's do let's do feminine masculine energy since this is kind of how this reading went so what would the feminine say in this connection <laughs> um okay we have marriage this relationship is moving towards a sacred union i'm happy that it's over and balance i told you something this is like that trying to step into that queen of pentacles trying to find security and balance this can be somebody trying to find balance within a relationship after something has happened or transpired here one person is giving too much in this relationship that might mean something else to somebody especially this married this person's been married before um what about the masculine energy here? Now, when I say divine feminine and masculine energy, it's whatever you feel like you're in at this time from this reading. Who you feel like you are at this time. It doesn't matter your gender. It's, a, it's not even about gender. It's not about anything like that. It has to do with the divine masculine is the person that's stepping up, taking the lead, structuring something, putting something into place using their power in that way. The divine feminine is someone that actually nurtures, protects, and grows everything and sees the value and growth in things. Um, she's the creator of life. Okay, what would the divine masculine say in this? Whoa, they have a lot to say. I guess we're going to let them. I have too much to lose, and I'm sorry. I wish I could take back my words. So there's something here that this person, the Divine Masculine, is sorry about. They wish they could take back, maybe because they feel like now they have too much to lose. I left you before you could leave me. I couldn't tell you face to face. And fate... This is a destined partnership. This person holds um, a lot of shame. There's something here that they re regret. They wish they did differently, but they may have had a hard time facing you. Like they couldn't face you and tell you something. They didn't have the courage. They didn't have the strength. They did not have the integrity at the time to, to face something, to tell you something. That's something that they're sorry for here. But then this is like some somebody that feels like this is faded in a way. This may not be words. It could just be something they've done. But now they feel like they have too much to lose here. This could be like someone saying, I have too much to lose now. Um, they may have felt like, you know, you were going to leave. I left you before you could leave me. So they sabotaged this in some way. And now they feel this is faded. Okay. Whew. Um, pull myself out of that there. Let's see, get some advice, guys. Let's see. Can I have some advice, please, for Paul three. About this, abundantly gifted. Number sixty nine. You are powerfully fa favored, supernaturally gifted, and will be abundantly successful in this lifetime. Believe in your gifts. So there's a side note for you guys. You're needing to know. Now we just got three all together. There's something here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna read all these. Then I got one more I want to get, and we'll get a postcard from Spirit. Okay. Number thirty-nine. Pressing matters, a pressing problem, need, or issue has to be dealt with immediately. It's time to focus on what's important. So there's something here you're needing to look at, but it came out with these vibe check. 
Number 29. Now you started with number 29 with connections. So it says low vibrational energies are affecting your ability to manifest your best life. Clear the negative energy that's attached to you. And both the feminine and masculine energies have negative energies attached to them. Like we talked about. The unseen, number 70. There are greater forces at work behind the scenes taking care of all the details. Let go of the specific expectations. So if you have expectations here on the situation, it's saying let go of your expectations here. Let go of your idea of being afraid of not seeing that what's going to happen here in the future. This is, pay attention to, as far as abundantly gifted here, whatever you, whatever you can give, Whatever you are giving of yourself is enough in this situation. I think that the problem here is the two of you are looking for that sense of security. So it's like you tried to give more beyond what you're ready for. And that's making you feel pressure and a way that's not necessary. You know, and it's causing sabotage. Definitely. Um, this is like, do, you know, do a vibe check here as far as continue to check in with yourself and don't put like crazy expectations on the situation or on yourself where you put that on the other person like you act out of fear and then you create an expectation and you expect the other person to fill in that void that you're feeling in some way and they don't do that because they have their own insecurities that they're going through that can leave you feeling like a low vibrational energy and it can affect what you really want to manifest here. Um, see how they all have their arms crossed too? Even here. You know, and that card was <clears throat> the one about taking a risk. When you take a risk, when you take um, a chance at something, that's what it is. It's, it's taking a chance at something. You are blinded here. You don't know how it's going to go. You just know it's something that you desire. It's something that you feel like would be abundant. Okay. I'm going to get a few of these and then we're going to get the postcard from Spirit. I'm losing my voice as we speak. <laughs> so that's telling me I need to stop. What other advice do you have for Pile 3? Balance. We see this, see this twice now. Yeah, balance is so, so important. Before you take any risk or actions, make sure that you're, you have the right balance. Make sure you have the right gear before you take that leap, you know. Make sure that the other person's on board with you, that you're on the same path, you're on the same page. If you want to allow for time, that's something that's here. Allow, you know, have, give that opportunity. Um, if this is a destined partnership, time will always bring you back together. You know, something that's meant for you just won't pass you by. But you, there is such a thing as self-sabotaging, right? That's the thing with opportunities. You know, we get opportunities all day long. Opportunity to do this, opportunity to do that. We, we ask for peace. We have an opportunity to, to have a resolution, but we don't take it. You know, it's um, these types of things that, that happen that can sabotage that you know and they'll keep being thrown at us in different ways um up until we may have a tower moment but but it is an opportunity that's here using that opportunity for balance to find balance is important there needs to be a healthy balance of physical emotional and spiritual intimacy for a relationship to be sustainable letting go there's something here that needs to be let go of If someone leaves you confused more than comforted, you need to reassess their access to you. It's just finding balance with, you know, whether or not maybe you can let go of something. Then put yourself first is here. Loving yourself makes you more romantically attractive. Yeah, it's funny, like we... We tell ourselves... We, we know our value. We know our worth, right? 
then we have somebody that comes in and throws something in our op in our way as an obstacle of being able to see that within ourselves um, causes insecurities to take place and it's hard to understand that insecurities that take place because of others it's not that we allow for that it just happens to kind of give us an opportunity to see past why they chose that, why they went in that direction, and see ourselves as being able to put ourselves first and understanding what makes us romantically attractive, what makes us loving, what makes us wanting someone else wanting to care for, care for, you know, to be cared for. There's a test here of that and finding balance in that and whether or not you can let something go. If someone is in, is in a place to where it's like it's so confusing or leaving you confused, really sitting and, and contemplating things on your own is important here. Open yourself up to others. It's safe for you to let your heart be seen. Don't be scared. Being honest with yourself is so important. So, so, so important here. Being honest and true to yourself. Not doing something for the other person so that you can have that false sense of security. It's momentary. momentary. It's not permanent. It's, um, it's a band-aid to a bigger issue. So be honest with yourself and how you really feel in the situation and true to that, authentic to that. That way you're giving this whole connection the, the benefit of a doubt or the best, um, I don't wanna say the benefit of a doubt, the best overall chance is by being honest with yourself and how you really feel here and what you need Especially if that's just time. Um, Twin Flame is here. Uh, yeah. I do feel like that this was a... Um, there's that mirroring energy, by the way. I do feel like that this is a sacred connection. You have, have connections out here twice, pretty much. And acceptance. And all those hands going together. And then you also have the Divine Feminine and Masculine energies out on the table. There, and, and the lovers as well. There's this idea of this awakening that you're having because of this connection. And some of it has to do with your past. But it says this person is, is your mirror soul. You're pulling out each other's shadow side like I described to you in this card here with the, with the mushroom being there. And the hands again. Um, the seven of cups. You're pulling each other's shadows out. And the Divine Feminine has these insecurities around deception, around your, your heart, your feelings, around um, new beginnings in some way. The Divine Masculine has these energies of fear of when it comes to transformation or seeing the beauty within yourself, you know, um, endings and new beginnings and, and time and energy into something. And they're, you're mirroring one another and these insecurities are playing out. And you're making decisions based off of that. Yeah. It says this, can, this is why this connection feels so sacred to you. And like I said before, there's still this understanding of how valuable this is that you still see here. And the potential here as well. Okay. Postcard from Spirit. Y'all had a long reading. This was a long one. I was reading two, two energies. I don't know what side of the fence you're on here, but... Um, there's definitely a, a little bit of thin air here between the two of you where you can't quite grasp what you desire. And there's frustration around that. What do you have here for Paul 3? <laughs> two cards, imagine that, I told you. And then one of them's a butterfly. Um, so Divine Feminine Masculine Advice that's here. Let's see if we can tell which is which. You are magical, dear you. There is a balance between activity and rest, ebb and flow. You can't have one without the other. If you're faced with an obstacle right now, the best course is surrender and non-resistance. 
Soon enough, you'll see how easy it is to flow around it. Now is one of those times when you must trust the river of your life. Give with the flow, and in no time, you'll reach what your heart, what you have your heart and hope set on. See, this is talking a lot about just kind of going more in the flow with things. You notice it says flow. It's not like a raging river, right? It's like taking your time here. Just remember, spirit will keep your head above water and will direct the currents. <laughs> when it's time for a greater effort, you'll know exactly when you need to work those manifesting muscles. It can be challenging to master the flow of cycles of your life, but as you develop your skills, abundance, affluence will be yours. Right? <laughs> Enjoy the flow and trust those currents. For we're right here with you, with our little umbrella drink, smiling at your success. Love you so very much. I feel like this is more the, damask, the masculine energy. Um, and I look down and said muscles. <laughs> right there. Um, girls can have muscles. Anyways, um, manifesting muscles. It's like this. You manifest direction. That's where your control is. You know, instead of trying to take control, even though you are in that, you use that divine masculine energy to benefit you, not hurt you. You act out of understanding, compassion, compromise, not fear or anxiety or stress. And it's saying, allow yourself to master that flow and, and let the cycles complete and start by themselves instead of force forcing something. Um, interesting. Okay. You are magical. Dear you, you are in such good shape right now that we're all doing the happy dance. In this moment, you have the power to make a choice to get with spirit and co-create a miracle. You may wonder where this is all going, but if you want to manifest your desires for their highest good, you need to stay focused on the now. All power is in the present moment. Ask yourself, what are your dominant thoughts now? What beliefs are you motivated by? Do you have clarity right now? How is your stroke, how is your conscious contact with the divine? Are you plugged in or are you trying to do life all by your small self? Get rid of the negative energy now. Resentments be gone. Forgiveness and love enter, please. You can do your life beautifully and create your most powerful future right now, right here in this moment. Are you thrilled to know how you have a huge cheering section over here? <laughs> Love and hugs always. That may, that's going to make me cry because <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. It's kind of funny. Um, because both of these cards represent them saying that they are cheering for, for you. This one says cheering section. You have a huge cheering section over here. And this one says... We're, we're right here with our little umbrella drinks, smiling at your success. And so it's funny how they mention that, like they're both cheering you on, you know, in, in your own ways. That's there. I also thought it was interesting that this card says, resentments be gone, forgiveness and love enter, please. Because someone's holding on to something here and they're having a hard time like releasing or letting go or accepting it. Um, that's playing out as far as an insecurity playing out goes. So it's like everything you communicate or choice you make is filtered through that lens of those insecurities that are playing out. And until there's this forgiveness and love that enter, or the resentments that you're holding, or the bitterness that you're holding, and until you release that and let that go, you're always going to keep yourself kind of stuck in that place, whether that's moving on beautifully or, or manifesting this connection to be more powerful. You know, that's your decision, right? Okay, let's see what we got. So we have the only illusion of death is that it is an ending. Life as if, live as if your choices will always matter. Sorry, I got so stuck on that. Yeah, this is about the death and rebirth here. It says the only illusion of death is that it is an ending. And there may be some kind of chapter or something here that's closing 
even if that's resentments that you're holding on to, it, it's like a knowing that you need to let something go that's only causing you hurt, harm. Could be even changing your character of who you are. Um, playing out, out, out these insecurities is not who you want to be, you know? So if anything, do it for yourself first. Um, and then live as if your choices will always matter. So whatever your choices are that you make or um, live as it, sorry, I got distracted by this. I got to talk about it. <laughs> I shouldn't have looked at it, but it was hard not to. It says, I am that. And it was kind of linking into that. And it's like, whatever you feel like you are, you think you are, you, you are, you know, um, if a dog thinks it's a cat, it's going to be a cat. It's going to act like it. Like I have a cat that acts like a dog. So, <laughs> lays with the dogs. We have other cats. It, it chooses to be right next to the dogs and wants to lay, eat, eats the dog food. It's cr it's crazy. Thinks it's a dog. Um, therefore, it is. <laughs> right? So, if you think that this is something that is can't grow or blossom or fix, then it, it won't. You know, it's like it decide. you have to decide what you want. Really. Um, jealousy. That's what I was talking about, about making you feel a way that you don't like to feel. Those insecurities playing out in that way, making you feel like jealous even. And, and that's a, a very uncomfortable feeling, right? You have that opportunity that's here. So that opportunity is coming towards you. There's that snake. That can ruin that opportunity real quick, right? Okay. All right, y'all had the longest reading. <laughs> Super long. Let's see. That's allowing deception, negativity, toxic things to disrupt an opportunity that's at hand there. It's maybe allowing jealousy to take over, you know, or allowing fear to take over. <laughs> I say that and like, you got the pen. I found this pen at my grandma's to me. It looks like a, it looks like a, um, a smile, a, a anxious face, like two eyes, and then the mouth is kind of like downward. You see, do you see that? <laughs> so it's just me. But it's funny that I was talking about this being a fear. You know, it's fear related. Letting fear ruin your your opportunity that's here, or, or anxious energy ruining it. Oh, didn't want to get that out. The only letter we have right now out is J. So now we have a D, an N, and a K. Okay, we also have the sun, so Leo energy. We have the house, cancer energy with that um, fourth house. We have the, oh, which reminds me of success, joy, and happiness within a foundation is here. Seeing a foundation clearly or seeing security or, or comfort clearly where you are comfortable, right? You have the um, um, lightning bug just went blank. <laughs> Um, so shining light on something, attachment. You have the the thread here. So there's definitely attachments that are here, shining light on the attachment that's here. And then my favorite, <laughs> you'll have the the rainbow with the music notes. So this is like finding the flow, like we talked about, finding peace, finding harmony with the happiness of where you are. You know, we deny ourselves happiness all the time because of insecurities and fears and there just all this stuff, you know, playing out. We, it just takes away our own happiness. Um, and like one of the other piles had a card that said causing your own pain. So that it's like that in a way where you have to decide what's best for you and then move forward with that decision. But allow yourselves to be happy, you know? I think that that's important here. And all these things that are playing out in the background are not allowing you to be happy. Okay. All right, guys. I'm going to stop here. It's a long reading. <laughs> so thanks so much for being here. Thanks for all your love and all your support and kindness, of course. I hope this helps. I'm definitely sending you some love and light. Good luck to you guys. And I hope to see you soon. <laughs>